leading the way with important local coverage. You're watching WISN 12 News at 10. Remembering a three-year-old boy found murdered. I wish I could see your face. <laughs> the vigil and his family's call for justice. Wisconsin's attorney general is taking on the GOP's election probe. The rising stakes in a case now getting national attention. And from Milwaukee to the Grammys. If it feels right, sounds right, then it's right. His journey to provide for his family, leading him toward music's biggest award. Tonight, stuffed animals and candles sit in the alley where searchers discovered the body of three-year-old Major Harris yesterday afternoon. The medical examiner today confirmed the little boy died of a gunshot wound to the head. Police located his body in a container placed outside near 35th and Roar. They said a tip led them to that spot. Major had been missing for about a week. Police issued an Amber Alert last Saturday, two days after finding his mother, Mallory Munzenberger, shot and killed behind a home in Milwaukee. As police moved in on that suspect, Jaheem Clark, Sunday, they say he died by suicide. Tonight, authorities still don't know who killed Major or what brought Major and his mother from the La Crosse area to Milwaukee. Why do you think someone would want to do this, hurt them like this? Evil. Evil, pure evil. That's it, that's all. They have no souls, no nothing. Amid their grief, mourners remembered Major tonight at a vigil, the life of a little boy lost in an act of violence. 12 News photojournalist Scott DePew was there. Y'all didn't even know them. Come on. But y'all hit that pavement looking for him. We love you, God. And we love Major. I love y'all and God bless everybody that came here today. Everybody. Thank y'all for rocking with me since I came to Milwaukee. Y'all showed me love. This movement is major. Major will get justice in the name of Jesus. Right now, God, I ask you to touch the hearts of the family, the community, the inner city. You showed up. And you showed up. We love you. We love you. We love you. When do we want it? Now. We love you, Major. We love you, Major's father has been critical of the Milwaukee Police Department's investigation, something the city's acting police chief defends. We pull recruit officers out of class to search. We search up in Dane County. We search in Germantown. And I know there's never enough. But if I can put anything out there, the men and women of the Milwaukee Police Department worked extremely hard. We do know Milwaukee police made six arrests in connection with Mallory Munzenberger's death. They're acquaintances and relatives of the suspect, Jaheem Clark. No one has been criminally charged. In a statement to 12 News Today, Munzenberger's family said they're left with unanswered questions. They also wish to have Mallory and her son, Major, buried together. Our coverage continues on the WISN 12 News Facebook page. That's where you can watch today's vigil in memory of Major. Weather Watch 12 now, another chilly night, another night for frost. Mark, we need to cover those plants yet again. Yeah, a lot of people had frost around this morning. It's going to do that again and probably expand it a little bit more than what we had from this morning. Temperatures will be about a degree or two colder than we were. If you're inland, temperatures down around freezing, so be ready for that. Maybe right along the lakeshore, it's not quite as cold, but still better be on the safe side if you want to keep those uh, flowers hanging around. Frost advisory in effect until 8 o'clock in the morning for the entire area. Temperatures will be falling back down into the 30s. Not quite as bad along the lakeshore. And the nice thing is some sunshine on the way. How long that lasts and when our temperatures warm back to the 60s coming up in Weather Watch 12. A Dane County judge will hear arguments Monday morning over whether to block subpoenas issued in the GOP election review. 12 News Matt Smith tonight with the latest developments receiving national attention. The stakes nationally intensifying over the Republican-led review of the 2020 election and subpoenas demanding testimony. Why did you feel it was necessary at this point to go to the courts? The law is clear that it needs to be conducted as part of the legislative hearing process, and Justice Gableman's team was unwilling to agree to that. They want to do it in a, a secret, 
uh, private uh, setting. The Justice Department asking a judge to force Michael Gableman, the attorney overseeing the review, to conduct any interviews in public and declare the subpoenas issued to the State Elections Commission invalid. The first courtroom showdown now coming Monday morning. Unfortunately, it's been um, a rather pathetic circus to watch. I mean, you know, you couldn't write something this stupid. Uh, and I think at some point we need some intervention because Wisconsin's not looking great with this clown show going on. Congressman Mark Pocan Friday in a taping for Upfront as nationally Democrats and Republicans are intently watching Wisconsin. You think the investigation was necessary in Wisconsin? Absolutely. I mean, there are still things that I've, you know, I've heard that I can't explain. Nobody should question the result of the election, but again, that requires tightening controls over you know, what happened during COVID, where we dramatically increased absentee balloting. Monday's hearing only involves subpoenas issued to the State Elections Commission, but its outcome will impact mayors and local election officials who have also received subpoenas in Milwaukee, Madison, Racine, Kenosha, and Green Bay. In Milwaukee, I'm Matt Smith, WISN 12 News. Another review of the 2020 elections, separate from the GOP's review, found no issues with voting machines in Wisconsin. State auditors released their report today. Auditors say they found some inconsistencies with how the election was administered, and they made dozens of recommendations to the Wisconsin Elections Commission. State Senator Kathy Bernier, a former county clerk, said in a statement the report did not reveal any sizable organized attempt at voter fraud, what the audit did show was that, once again, election administration at both the state and local level was sloppy. These are Wisconsin's updated COVID-19 numbers from the State Department of Health Services. Wisconsin reported 2,102 new confirmed cases. 30 more people died. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration is proposing a $9,500 fine against a Caledonia company, saying it failed to protect workers from COVID-19. OSHA says a 49-year-old dispatcher at Amston Trailer Sales died of COVID this past April. 11 out of 38 employees also tested positive between April 12th and May 18th. OSHA says the company didn't follow its own COVID mitigation measures for mask wearing and social distancing. Amston declined to provide any comment to 12 News. Snowplow drivers are essential for Wisconsin winters, but Milwaukee's Department of Public Works says it's currently short about 85 drivers. That's more than one third of the number needed to combat a large snowstorm. Citizens beware, there could be some snow issues this year if we get serious storms. We may very well end up with a situation where we have snow plows gassed, ready, idling, ready to roll and nobody to drive them. The city says several factors are behind the driver shortage, including competition from private companies and the city's COVID vaccine mandate. DPW confirms a handful of existing drivers lost their job because of it. The city is working on a solution for the shortage. A Racine County judge sentenced a man to four years in prison for selling gummies laced with marijuana. Anthony Luna pleaded guilty to possessing drugs with the intent to distribute and neglecting a child. Back in January, Racine County Sheriff showed 12 News some of the pot-laced candy authorities had seized from a house. Prosecutors charged him with child neglect because a child was living in the house at the time. Red light cameras, that's what we want. Red light cameras and photo enforcement. State Representative Lakeisha Myers, a Democrat from Milwaukee, reintroduced the Safe Roads, Save Lives Act today. The bill would put 75 traffic cameras around the city. They'd photograph cars that run red lights, leading to tickets and possibly alerting police in real time. It's part of a push to crack down on reckless driving. Wisconsin lawmakers did not advance the bill when it was first introduced last year. Wisconsin Republicans are doubling down on efforts in Milwaukee ahead of the 2022 midterms. The GOP reopened its Northside field office in the Bronzeville neighborhood today as part of an effort to reach more black voters. Senator Tim Scott from South Carolina was there. Sometimes in order to make the kind of progress that's necessary, you do have to go where you're not invited. Because when you have a story to tell, you cannot expect them to come to where you are. You have to go to where they are. Senator Ron Johnson also attended. The office first opened last year. Wisconsin's Democratic U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin was in Racine today. She met with members of the city's African-American Chamber of Commerce. Senator Baldwin pushed President Biden's economic plan as negotiations reach a critical point among Democrats in Washington. Do you feel confident that Democrats can get this past the finish line? So I, 
I, we've all gone into this with the idea that failure is not an option. So I think there's resolve to get this done. Democrats are negotiating a much smaller plan that includes funding for child care and universal pre-K. The White House is attempting to pass both its economic package and infrastructure bill. Court records released tonight say a prop gun that killed a woman on a New Mexico movie set yesterday actually contained a live round. How many people were injured? Two, I that I know of. I was sitting, we were rehearsing, and it went off, and I ran out. We all ran out. Actor Alec Baldwin fired the shot from that gun. The documents say an assistant director on set handed Baldwin the weapon. He reportedly did not know the weapon contained live rounds. Cinematographer Helena Hutchins died in the shooting. A director standing behind her was injured. In a tweet today, Baldwin said, quote, There are no words to convey my shock and sadness regarding the tragic accident. No charges have been filed in the shooting. From Milwaukee to becoming a Grammy hopeful, next to 10, a producer's path to success in the music industry. New video shows armed robbers storm a gas station. They weren't expecting what came next. Then later, Operation Football highlights from the first round of the high school playoffs. Coming up this week on Big 12 Sports Saturday, two games in five days for the Packers, from trap game to perhaps their toughest game on short rest. We look at the matchup, and Dan Needles goes one-on-one -on -one with Hannah Storm, who is calling the action. Banners and bling at Pfizer Forum. We look back at ring night through the sights and sounds of the faces of Bucks basketball. And who is the most intriguing college basketball team to watch in the state? We debate it this week on Big 12 Sports Saturday. <laughs>